is constitutional attorney Jeff Lewis. He's been practicing law for nearly 30 years. In other words, he knows what he's talking about. So let's uh, pick his brain here for a few minutes on morning TV. Thanks for being here. Um, all right, so we have oral arguments today in this, in this case, which kind of puts two theories that I thought we had settled and agreed on in this country, that, mm -hmm. that no one uh, is above the law. Uh, and but the Supreme Court taking this case legitimizes to me what I thought was a settled question. What's your take on why they took this case and how you think it's going to go? Well, it isn't uh, settled in the sense that the Supreme Court has never looked at the issue of whether a sitting, uh, excuse me, a former president could be subject to criminal prosecution. And what the court has to weigh here today are the two conflicting values in our government. First. We have a system of checks and balances where the courts traditionally are a check on the executive branch. But also, Mr. Trump has raised the argument that, look, a president shouldn't have to look over his shoulder for every action he takes. My prediction is the court's going to fashion a very limited rule based on the extreme facts leading up to January 6th uh, that won't have universal application beyond the facts, the extreme facts of January 6th. So what does it tell you, the fact that they took up the issue, but also that they're slow walking it as well, because they could have expedited this, and Jack Smith especially wanted that. Um, what does that tell you, if you can kind of read the tea leaves a little bit, which way they could possibly be leaning? Because wanting to say something is one thing and add their two cents, but uh, slow walking it in particular has some experts thinking that it may go into his favor. Right. Both deciding this case and refusing Jack Smith's request earlier on to take this case early before the intermediate court could have big consequences and the Supreme Court's aware of those consequences. So it could forecast that they do intend to provide some immunity for some acts uh, that Mr. Trump took while he was in office. All right, Jeff, you're sticking with us uh, to kind of help us walk through the hearing uh, in a few minutes here. So we're gonna go now, but uh, have another coffee. Stand by. We'll be back <laughs> very shortly. I'll be here. All right. Back with his analysis of all of this is constitutional attorney Jeff Lewis. He's been practicing law for nearly 30 years. He's been listening along with us as to what's happening in these uh, early minutes <laughs> of the uh, oral arguments. What is your headline uh, right now? Well, if I'm just if I'm former President Trump, I can't be happy that of all the examples of extreme criminal conduct, bribery, assassination, coups, that the justices are talking about this because the justices are contemplating the absurd result of immunizing a president from these extreme examples. It's a, it's a sign that they're rejecting any argument of absolute immunity, and they're gonna toy with more nuanced uh, decision like a reasonable objective test. So why go through all of this? You just use the word absurd. Why slow walk it? Why take all the time? Why even bring this up? Well, look, the function of the Supreme Court isn't necessarily to adjudicate disputes between the parties before it, but to establish uniform rules for the future for all parties, for all politicians. So one reason to take this matter up and discuss all these nuanced examples is to provide guidance for future prosecutors and presidents and defense lawyers as what are the outer boundaries of what can be prosecuted and what are the outer boundaries of, of defenses that a politician may, may have. And it's still fascinating to me, the idea, again, no one is above the law. Mm -hmm. Just a general principle of American life. And it never, there's not ever a condition on that that says, except if you've been president. And so I'm fascinated by the idea that you think the court may take, make some decision where well, these smaller crimes are, are protected, but you can't murder someone, you can't burn down a house, you know? You, like, I, I don't want, as opposed to just, you know, yes, you can be held liable under our normal standards after you leave office so that it doesn't create a political upheaval while you're in. That doesn't seem to be difficult. Do you really think they're gonna nuance this thing and determine big crime, little crime, and what the president, of all people, the president, can do the idea that the president could commit a crime and be okay? Uh, in office is just, it just seems deeply un-American. Where, where is this headed? Yeah, your discomfort and uh, comments brings to mind the 1977 interview of President Nixon when he said, if a president doesn't act, it's legal. 
Uh, that's the position that Trump is advocating, this absolute above the law position. And I don't see the Supreme Court accepting that absolute argument, but I, I do predict that there will be some form of nuanced immunity that allows a trial court to determine if you had 100 lawyers in a room, would all 100 lawyers agree that what the president just did is clearly illegal and outside the boundaries of his position? <laughs> so uh, under Sounds that, like a slippery slope. right? Under that model, two questions: What do you think could qualify as a? We're okay if you committed that crime, mm -hmm. Mr. President. And then number two: Are you at all worried about the slippery slope of someone out there politically looking at this ruling, seeing that kind of mindset, and going, "Ooh, well, I should run, not necessarily right. because I'm interested in the job, but for whatever reason suits me. If I become president, I could do X, Y, or Z and be okay because I was the president." Yeah, I think that slippery slope argument is really possible. And on the other side of that, you know, before President Clinton, we the, the, the term impeachment was something we learned about in history books, but we didn't really deal with it in contemporary politics. And now in, impeachment is a, a regularly used tool in the political toolkit. It's just so you could see in the future Department of Justice prosecutions of criminal presidents, uh, excuse me, of former presidents, uh, you could see that routinely being used in the future if the Supreme Court allows any form of criminal prosecution to go forward. All right, Constitutional Attorney Jeff Lewis, thank you so much for your insight and sticking with us this hour. We appreciate it. Of course, we'll be monitoring for you at home the arguments and bring you more as we get more information. We'll be right back.